Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to start part two of building a light switch in Second Life. So last time we built this simple light switch, so if you click on it, the light comes on, and click on it again, the light goes off. So here's a little bit of housekeeping to get you up to speed. If you just joined us, you can get all the code for the script from our Google Code project. So just go to code.google.com forward slash p forward slash second life lively scripts and you can download this code as a word document and just cut and paste it as we did in part one and now we will be treating rotation in this video as well so you need to view one of my youtube videos part two scripting a note card giver in second life and i show you rotation script in that particular video and how to use it this uh... is also covered in jeff heaton's book so go make sure you go to www.heatonresearch.com and check out jeff's two great books on scripting and uh, he also has free code on his site as well so let's go ahead and talk about how this script is written if you come along here and click on the light switch let's right click and go to edit and click on the double click on the folder called new script and this is the script for this light switch let's explain line by line how this script works now let me explain how this code works line by line in the first line you have you declare an integer called my switch and then in the start entry my switch is set to false and else set text is light switch with a color of white and an alpha of one let's make sure that's there so the else set text puts the word light switch above the switch panel which is white with an alpha of one below that is the touch start command and so when you hit that function you go into an if statement and so if the my switch is equal to false, then it sends out a message to all the linked prims. Message, LL message linked, linked to all children, to all prims connected, and send out the message start. And inside the linked prim, there actually is a function start, which turns on the light. And then you set the my switch to true. Now if the my switch is not false, if it's not off, if it's on, for example, then it skips this part of the if statement, goes to else, sends a message to the link statements and sends out a message stop which turns off the light and sets the message back to false and so each time you touch it it alternates between sending out start and stop and start and stop turning the light on and off and on and off now let's take a look at the code inside the link prim or the light now let's take a look at the second object so we're going to click on our light bulb right click and edit And let's bring out the script. Double click on the light bulb script, and there it is. And we're going to go through this line by line. Now, the way this works is you enter the default and then the state entry. In the state entry, there's a command called LL primitive params. Now, if you have difficulty understanding the commands in Second Life, Second Life helps you out. Go to help, LSL wiki help, and go ahead and let's look for that command. So just go down the scroll to LL set primitive params. And give it a moment to come up. And here is the entire command and everything that it can do. And as you scroll down, in addition, there's code below. So you can actually work with this code and work with the param um, per and work with the parameters above and actually learn how to use these different commands in Second Life. So I use this a lot. Great place to go and learn about everything a particular command can do in Second Life. So this LL set uh, primitive commands, or LL set primitive params in this case, sets the full bright command but sets it to false. So in the entry state, the light bulb is off. The important part here is the link message. This actually grabs the outgoing command from the control panel. So if stop is issued, then the set params or the LL set primitive params is set full bright to false. So the light is turned off. If start is issued, then the LL set primitive params, bright, full bright, primitive, is set to true. So the light is turned on. Really simple code, but different than what we've done before since commands are actually being exchanged between params. Good. So let's finish that up. That's how the code works. Let's go outside and kind of work with the uh, example we saw at the beginning of part one and take it apart piece by piece so you understand how this was constructed 
And then you can go and create something even better than what I've done. Okay, we're back at our original example. Let me go ahead again and remind you how this works. If you click on the switch, you see it rotates and the lights come on. You click on it again, it rotates back and the lights go off. Everything is the same here as far as the lights going on and off and the commands being transferred to the light sources. But now, as you switch on the control panel, commands are also being sent to the toggle, which causes it to rotate back and forth. Now, just to remind you, we treat it rotation. In a previous video, part two, scripting a note card giver in Second Life, where we showed about, where we talked about rotation, and that's also treated in Jeff Heaton's books. So take a look at those. But I'm gonna actually take this apart and show you the code. So let's go ahead and right-click here and go to Edit. Now, one way to go to Edit too is go ahead and hit Control Four. It takes you to Edit as well, and let's switch to the Edit button, and click on this. We want to delink this so we can actually look at all of this. So Control. Shift L delinks. And now we can, I'm just going to take a look at the light real quick. So I'll hit edit. And you can see on this light bulb, when you click on the script, this is the exact same LL set primitive params and grabbing that stop and start command. So that's the same as before. Once again, you hit the control panel here. Let's go on that. This is the switch panel. And once again, you see the switch code and the um, touch start command which sends out the LS message linked to all the children attached. So it's sending it to all the children, not just the lights, but any prim that's attached. So now if we go to our rotator, right here, that is an attached prim. So I click on that, and you can see the uh, code is very similar here. We have two states here, a on state and an off state. So let's go ahead and right click and edit the rotor, and let's double click and take a look at that script. And this script is very similar to the light script. If you go down, you see you have the default state, and in the default state, you enter into the off position. That's the rotation of the off switch. And then you have that same link message command. This grabs the outgoing command from the switch panel. So if it's a stop, you get the off state. And if it's a start, you have the on state. So I've defined those functions up above. And so my on state is a rotation of minus 30 degrees, and my off state is a rotation of plus 30 degrees. And that's really all there is to this code. So go ahead and grab it from Google Code, uh, read Jeff's books, uh, take a look at my videos, and you're going to have no problems. Let's link all this back together and watch our light work. So I'm going to link here, Con uh, shift, click, and link that. I want to shift click the rotor, and the last thing I want to link is the primitive, the root prim. That's the switch panel, link there. Then Control L to link together, and you see everything's linked. And let's go ahead and get rid of the edit panel here. And let's click and see if it works. Oh, lights off. Lights on. Ho, ho, ho. Great stuff. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial by Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University.